Testing one, two, and two, trois, ichi, nisan. Hi guys, how's it going? And welcome to VR Essentials, your go-to place for all the practical uses of virtual reality. Today, another extremely bombshell of a video with, of course, the release of the Pimax version 3.0, which is a beast of a VR headset. I'm going to go through all the details, what it means, and also Pimax very recently did an event. So we're going to show you some footage of what the CEO uh, had to say, and also some of the people that worked at Pimax as well, and a whole bunch of stuff. So let's just transition over to the other screen. But before I do, I just want to welcome you to the channel if you're so first time here. And of course, a huge welcome back to all our regular viewers and awesome subscribers, because as usual, it's thanks to you that I want to continue to see upload content to the channel. All right, so let's just transition over now. And then first of all, let's just play the trailer, um, you know, of, of this and, and, and then we'll discuss as we go along and you'll get my first reactions because I haven't actually watched uh, the trailer at this moment in time. It has exoskeleton design. Mm, interesting. And guys, do leave your comments below. Let me know what do you think of this design. Do you think it looks? It looks. It reminds me a little bit of the uh, Beat Saber cubes, uh, which is quite funny. But this is, of course, the Pimax logo, uh, which they've been using in all the various different VR headsets. Uh, Pimax, for those who don't know, uh, has been uh, operating like a startup uh, over the last few years. Um, you know, and we didn't actually really know where they were. Um, you know, where, where where exactly they were and um, what what exactly they were doing because they went silent for quite a little while and then they just released this thing. So Pimax are known for having the world's largest field of view inside of a VR headset, just in case you didn't know. And they did specialize in PC VR, but now they're moving to another technology, which is a standalone technology. Mm. So it has four cameras, as you can see, um, one, two, three, four, which isn't too bad, but you know, um, uh, if, if we look at the Lynx R1 has six cameras, uh, even though it has a possibility of seven. So let's see, let's see what happens when they release this headset as to where the rest of the competitors will be at that time. But sorry, the, the thing to, uh, that is very new about this headset is that it has six degrees inside down tracking, which basically means no longer will you need base stations for this headset. So this is really a confirmation as to where VR is going, guys, because we all know the Valve will be releasing uh, the new VR headset as well, uh, basically next year in 2022. Uh, uh, which also is supposedly to have inside out tracking too, uh, and will be a wireless standard on your headset. So uh, we're all very anticipating uh, this as well. So the controllers, I just want to add that it does look very much like the touch controllers of the Oculus or Facebook or whatever name it will choose to be in the next few days. Um, so this seems to be very much the standard now. Uh, I guess the factories just provide, you know, the templates and the molds, um, you know, and then the buttons do whatever the buttons do with other all the various different VR headsets. So. Uh, nothing new here. Uh, I mean, it's new for Pimax, of course, but nothing new in terms of the industry or the development of the controllers. I think the most pioneering controllers at this moment in time will be the Sony PlayStation. So the swappable magnetic cover uh, is something that we're starting to see now in VR headsets. Uh, one of them, uh, one of which is inside of the actual, um, you know, the HTC Vive, the HTC Vive. Uh, HTC Vive Flow, which also has this magnetic technology. Uh, of course, the Valve Index as well and the HP Refurb G2 has this magnet technology, which you just boop, it just goes inside of the, the, the VR facial interface, goes inside of the uh, gasket, the, the, the uh, VR headset without having to fiddle around and click things through. It's just very magnetic. So this is very uh, convenient for the ergonomics of the headset.
so it does come with rear battery uh 6000 ma which probably means it's going to be what a couple of hours maybe three hours tops uh in terms of battery i'm not quite sure but it'll probably be around there uh it would be nice to have much more than that maybe double the amount uh considering that this headset by the way will be available uh next year in a year's time actually um so hopefully by then they'll be able to increase this kind of uh things because the competitors again uh, might provide double the amount uh, of battery life when we come to 2023. Native PC VR, now this is quite cool. So you'll have the cable that will run directly from your VR headset to the PC, or you'll be able to stream it, or you'll be able to have standalone experience, guys. So it has Bionic, Bionic lens system, which is a very new lens system, and we're going to go through this, um, you know, later on. I'm going to get, I'm going to get to take you through the different steps as what exactly this technology means, uh, because this is actually quite avant-garde and very much cutting-edge technology uh, in the world of VR. So it has an auto IPD adjustment. So this also is something that we've seen in the uh, Varjo Aero, uh, which also has the automatic IPD adjustment uh, from 57 to 72 mm. So it should cover most people. And again, we're gonna go through this a little bit uh, more uh, in detail as to what this means in other videos I'm gonna show you on this video. Now this is really what is amazing about this VR headset. It's got more than 200 field of view horizontally and more than 130 uh, field of view vertically. This is really going to provide you amazing immersion uh, when it comes to gameplay inside of the VR headset. And again, we're going to dive deeper into what all this means in just a moment. So do make sure you watch this video until the end. And guys, remember to like, subscribe, and share this video on all your social media, whether it's your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Reddit, your Twitter, so more people get to join the channel. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers, guys. And the more subscribers we have, what does this mean? It means we can provide you some giveaways and also get uh, hardware manufacturers like Panix to send us headsets to test and all these things. So the more you support the community, the more the community can give back to you as well. All right, let's continue. So it has active and passive cooling system with two fans. It looks like dual fans. So this is very interesting. It does look like a beast of a headset, as I mentioned. Um, so God knows how much this thing is going to weigh. Let, let's try and find out uh, in the rest of the video. Qualcomm XR2, guys, it is the cream of the creme of the creme uh, in the Qualcomm space with the XR2. Uh, Facebook is using it. Um, variety, Varjo, uh, I think, are using it, um, and a whole bunch also Lynx R1 are using it, and a whole bunch of other people are using the Qualcomm XR2 now. So you'll be able to use a Ouija module, which basically will enable you the ability to stream your PC VR titles. Uh, directly onto the Pimax itself um, without having the cable. So I, I'm not quite sure why they wouldn't want to build this in, to be honest with you. Uh, but again, perhaps it's a revenue thing, like, you know, you have to buy it as a separate uh, additional uh, hardware accessory, which you know, makes sense to me in terms of, you know, uh, providing more revenue for the company. So 60 Hertz Ultra, uh, I, I'm not quite sure what this means to be honest with you, because uh, 60 Hertz, 60 Gigahertz, uh, I don't know whether this is powerful enough or not to make sure that latency is not there. Uh, perhaps if you know, if you're an engineer or something, uh, you could write in the comments below. I'd love to know your feedback uh, on this specific 
uh, setting here. So this is also something that is very new coming to Pimax. Uh, we all know that this is also available at the moment. Um, you know, on the HTC Vive, they release a tracker which enables you to track the facial expressions. Uh, we also know that Deca Gear are trying to release a headset that will provide you this. Also, the, but the Deca Gear is not supposed to be a standalone VR headset. Uh, it is a very much a PC VR headset. Um, and then we also know that the future Facebook Oculus Quest 3 or whatever it will be called might also have this uh, technology inside and also the um, Vive Index might perhaps have this in the next Valve Index headset as well but this is for sure and also of course the HP Reverb, Reverb G2 Omnicept has it too um, so we know that this is where VR is heading in terms of being able to be more free uh, being able to express ourselves more like in the real world when we're meeting real people in the metaverse as it were. Lip tracking camera, so this is very interesting. Full body tracking, oh wow. Wow, look at this. Full body tracking. I mean, this is, if they can produce full body tracking from head to toe from the VR headset, now that will be amazing. I just I just want to see this again, because this is... Sorry, guy. I, I need to play this again. It's just, it's just crazy. Full body tracking, are you sure? Full body tracking, are you sure? Wow. Lighthouse cover, okay. And you, okay, so also be fully compatible with Steam uh, VR base stations 1.9, 2.0 for those who have the base stations. Because we are moving away from base stations, just so you know. Um, you know, but they, okay, they still serve their purpose, don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying we are moving away from this technology now. And mixed reality cover. Oh, now this is very interesting. Uh, because, because, of course, the... Um, what you need to know is that the Qualcomm XR2 provides mixed reality technology which would enable you basically to be both in AR and VR at the same time without having to interchange your headset. So does this mean that Pimax is looking to compete not only with Varjo but also the Lynx R1? This would be very interesting. But again, we're looking at a 12-month span here so anything can happen in that amount of time, right? Twelve K, guys. Twelve K. All right. So now, what I want to do is, um, I really want to uh, dive more into this because this video might be long, guys. By the way, timestamps in description below. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and enable the bell. Uh, so in future videos. By the way, guys, what's in here? What is in here? This is the Pico Neo Three, guys. So do make sure that you hit the bell notification uh, because you know we have the. Pico, sorry, Pico just there, the, the Pico Neo 2. Pico Neo 3 is there, so do make sure you hit the enable bell so you don't miss the next video that I'll be talking about, uh, which we'll talk about that. So uh, let's just, okay, so let's just uh, transition over to Upload VR's article. So, Pimax Reality, Pimax announces a 2,399 US dollar headset. Guys, this is very much looking to compete with the Vajo headset and also, of course, the future. By this time, we should have the uh, Apple VR headset, which should be around this price too. So this will compete with Apple's standalone VR headset as well as the Vajo VR headset. Um, so this is going to be very interesting and 5.K per eye. Guys, just to put this in perspective, the highest fidelity at the moment for consumers is the HP, uh, sorry, I think it's the HTC uh, Vive Pro 2 uh, resolution, which is 2488 by 2488 uh, pixels per eye. Just to put this in perspective, uh, because the HP Reverb G2 at the moment is 21600 by 21600. So just want to put things in perspective. This would be 
the highest VR headset infidelity um, by that time. Although it's very possible, of course, that other VR headsets which will come out, including, uh, let's not forget, the Apple uh, VR headset resolution should be 8K by 8K, uh, if I'm not wrong, and would have a price tag of 3,000, um, you know, US dollars. And it, we are looking for it to, uh, you know, come out around the same time as the Pimax. But Pimax, honestly, unless um, unless Apple by that time uh, will not be Steam VR compatible. Pimax will be obliterated. I mean, Apple has such a huge following all over the world. And, you know, uh, they're going to put all their VR headsets in all their different shops all over the world. I mean, it's going to be very hard. I won't say they'll be, they'll be obliterated. Don't get me wrong. They might be bought over by a venture capital or, or competitor. I think that's what will most probably occur. Um, or a venture or a competitor will maybe not buy them out but you know invest in them uh, because I, I i don't see how people are going to compete with apple when apple released their vr headsets and they make them you know consumer friendly in terms of pricing i think it's going to be very tough uh for a lot of people okay let's just go back uh to the video to the article uh here so 200 field of view um okay so do use dual five five thousand six hundred twenty by twenty seven hundred twenty two hundred hertz HDR LCD. Um, we'll use compound lenses. I'm going to get this. I'm going to go into this a bit more in detail right now. I just want to see if there's any more information in the article that basically isn't inside of the video. Uh, use same Snapdragon XR two as Oculus Quest two. Yes. Uh, in fully standalone mode, Pimax says reality's resolution is limited to below 4K per eye. But this is still not bad. I mean, you know, 4K per eye standalone is amazing, guys. We don't have this. Uh, and 12K um, LED, 12K, I mean, this is crazy. 12K LEDs, 12,000 LEDs. I mean, it's just crazy. And will come out in Q4 of 2022. Uh, and if there are no delay, if there are delays, we're looking at, of course, Q1 of 2023, guys. Um, okay, so nothing new in this article, really, uh, other than the price and also uh, 4K per eye standalone. Now let's dive more into what the CEO um, had to say. Well, what effect does all this have on distortion? Of course, with an ultra wide field of view, the distortion effect is almost inevitable due to the effects of physics. However, we said almost. So here we're talking about distortion. A lot of, uh, you know, for example, the Vajo has distortion, distortion uh, around the eye. The Vajo has distortion around the eye and also the Lynx R1 has distortion as well. Uh, and, and perhaps, I, th I don't think you can really see distortion on other VR headsets at the moment that are f uh, finessed. Um, maybe a little bit of distortion here and there in some VR headsets. Um, but this is what he's talking He's trying to say that basically the next Pimax version 3.0 will not have any distortion. So let's see what he has to say. The Reality Series now has zero distortion effect across your entire field of view while fully maintaining your binocular vision. Our new in-house anti-distortion algorithm is now baked into our image processing. So the distortion will be uh, done not, not through the hardware, but through the software system. All these changes add up to VR 3.0 users being able to say farewell to distortion effects. There's another thing we have to talk about related to the optics, though. We are incorporating built-in automatic interpupillary distance adjustment, auto IPD, so earlier we were talking about the IPD. So I think what's very interesting is, you know, at the moment um, you have to fiddle around, put inside the, you know, for example, for the, um, you know, if we just look at, uh, let me just come out here, uh, F, uh, HTC Vive Flow IPD Adjuster. If we look, if we look at the pictures, uh, you have to actually go inside of the headset. You know, just, just to let you guys know, is you have to go inside the headset and you have to click it, clack it here, you know, inside. It's not, there's nothing underneath of the headset itself uh, to actually adjust it. And also for the uh, Oculus Quest 2 uh, IPD, uh, 
Uh, same thing. You have to basically... Let me just get the thing here. So you have to go inside of the headset and actually adjust them inside. There's no buttons, uh, you know, below the headset. And also for the Lynx R1, uh, same thing. You're not going to be able to adjust it. Um, so if we look at here, let me just pull up this picture here because it seems to be the only picture I can find uh, in here. But basically you have to adjust it here there's no buttons underneath either so i think this is you know where uh, we're heading uh, in terms of the uh, ipd adjustment i think that's what's very interesting okay let's go now here to the field of view uh, where they explain a bit more about what all this means so let me just backtrack there we go graphs show the extent of the observable world that's seen by the human eyes so this is this is what the human eye sees at the moment our human eyes see 220 degrees field of view horizontally and 135 field of view vertically. It combines a horizontal field of view of 220 degrees and a vertical one of about 135 degrees. Pimax is marching towards one goal, that we replicate a natural viewing experience within the VR 3.0 headset. But how can this be achieved just with some updated optics? The mainstream solution in the industry for VR lenses is to use either a Fresnel lens or an aspherical lens. So traditionally at the moment, everyone is using more or less Fresnel or aspherical lenses. Uh, and he's just explaining the pros and the cons of this and exactly what it means in terms of the new technology they're about to release. Each of them has its pros and cons and each one has different compromises on image quality, glare, God rays, size, weight, yeah, other considerations. How exactly do you choose between a Fresnel and an aspheric lens? The answer is, you don't have to. We say Pimaxians deserve both. Here at Pimax, we don't stand for compromises. We wanted an all-around optical solution that delivers a naturalness as similar to the human eye as possible. And that's what inspired us to make this giant leap forward. We present to you our newest, most advanced, and innovative optical design, the Bionic Lens System. This so this is what they're coming out with. They're coming out with a system. A naturalness as similar to the human eye as possible. And that's what inspired us to make this giant leap forward. We present to you our newest, most advanced and innovative optical design, the Bionic the bionic lens system. So this is pretty amazing. And uh, guys, by the way, just a refresher that, um, you know, we are almost at 10,000 subscribers. So make sure to like, reshare this video on all your social media. So the more people in our community, then people, uh, manufacturers can send us a VR headsets. I can do giveaways on the channel and all this kind of stuff. So give back and I'll give back to you. I promise you that. Bionic lens system. This is a game changer and it's been made possible by our amazing optics engineering team. We've come a long way in creating the most uncompromising lens possible. Over the past four years, our optics team has poured hundreds and thousands of working hours into designing and remodeling countless lenses. Amazing. In the end, we created the Bionic Lens. Absolutely amazing. With the Bionic Lens, the Reality Series just made a huge leap forward. This includes an ultra-wide field of view of 200 degrees, only 20 degrees less than the crazy. human eye. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. And it crazy. has a vertical field of view that covers the entirety of human vertical vision. Absolutely amazing. But we're not done yet. Reality Series also makes a huge leap forward when it comes to binocular vision, which is the basis for stereopsis and fundamental to depth perception. It's now covering the full 118 degrees of your binocular vision only two degrees less than the average binocular vision of 120 degrees. Absolutely amazing. We're getting as close as possible to human eyes. This dramatically increases the overlap. So this is something that they already have built. They already have done. They have the prototypes for it, um, but they haven't yet released it. Of course, as I mentioned, this will be available in a year's time. So let's, let's dive in a little bit more uh, into the Omni all-in-one. So you can see here uh, that she's using the Pimax. I mean, the Pimax looks really massive. The, the weight is very much a concern of mine, to be honest, uh, unless they use 
I don't know, some kind of, uh, the weight, anything that's about 500 kilos is too heavy to put on the head. It's not safe. So this is something that to me is very much concerning. I hope they address this. Um, but anyway, this is the gameplay. As you can see, she's tethered to the PC first. Uh, so native PC VR mode first. I mean, look at this. The graphics look, oh my God, they look amazing. Look at this blur. Look at this field of view. Oh, this depth of field looks absolutely gorgeous. Graphics look very clear. Now this is wireless PC VR. So we're still PC VR, but we're wirelessly using the Wigit 60 gigahertz uh, dongle. And then now we're looking at PC VR mode. Uh, sorry, still wireless PC VR mode. And now this is the standalone VR mode. Amazing. Absolutely amazing, guys. So standalone VR mode. Um, you know what? What does this mean in terms of uh, the direction? Uh, you know, because now I mean I'm developing a VR app myself, and now what? I have to <laughs> make sure that the VR app works in absolutely everything. That's a nightmare for all the developers. I can tell you that right now. Um, but, and also, what does this mean in terms of the store? What kind of apps will they have in there? Is it going to become a distribution platform? Are they going to be using OpenXR? Because OpenXR, by that time, by the way, in uh, next year, 2022, I think Q2 or Q3, should be widely available, although we can already develop with it uh, on Unity, should be widely available throughout all the various different platforms on the web. So you should be able to basically uh, go on a web browser and then play your uh, your 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 apps through the web browser, uh, or it should just be widely available for all the different platforms without having to redo too much code. Because at the moment we have to adapt our code to the various different VR headsets, which can be a nightmare. Unless if you use the uh, MRTK from HP Reverb G2, which is what we're using at the moment, um, you don't have to redo any code, which is fantastic. Uh, but it's just a bit of a bummer to <laughs> to adapt and get to, to, to know how to use it. Um, so this is what's very exciting. Is it going to become a marketing platform for developers to be able to sell their apps? It's going to be another marketing platform for VR developers, let's be honest, for them to sell their apps. So another revenue stream for VR developers, so that is very good. Let's dive more into other specs of the VR headset. Let me show you uh, this video here. You also need a powerful device. That's so this is... Now, this, this section is uh, about the depth of field and the eye tracking. So the, the, the circle here is to show where the eye is actually focused. And you can see on here how it blurs on the sides. Here is a bit more blurry and here is extremely, uh, extremely uh, uh, clear. So let, let's just check out this video. The spotlight technology for dynamic foveation can help. With dynamic foveated rendering, we enable headsets to confidently run heavy content without compromise. It helps increase and maintain high frame rates as well as reduce GPU shading load and battery consumption. We're looking forward to power. So basically, the, the Foveat rendering will allow the, the PC, and sorry, the, technology the, in XR. the VR headset users will also need to save battery increase the uh, the resolution and also the frame rate of the VR headset. A powerful device. That's where Tobi Spotlight technology for dynamic foveation can help. With dynamic foveated rendering, we enable headsets to confidently run heavy content without compromise. It helps. So this is what's really interesting. And then guys, finally, I want to talk to you about the, of course, the frame rate and why is it, uh, you know, what, what, what is the difference between all these different frame rates? Why is it important that the Pimax is 200 hertz? I mean, that is crazy, guys. Let me show you why. From flat panel displays. So this is a video by Qualcomm, uh, by NVIDIA, guys, by the way. Object in motion. 
That's actually faint blur that looks ghosting. Ghosting is that property we've all experienced when you see this kind of faint. So the first thing, the first reason why it's important is the ghosting effect. Property we've all experienced when you see this kind of faint blur that looks like it's trailing an object in motion. That's actually a... So here he's showing basically the ghosting is the blurriness that's here. Uh, and you can tell that the higher the resolution, the frames per second, the less ghosting, the more clear it actually is. Side effect or a property of our typical modern flat panel displays because they have an update rate. Looking at our bouncing ball animation, you can see that the step size is fairly large, which means that smear behind the object is fairly pronounced. If we look at the animation now at 240 hertz, you can see the step size is much smaller, which makes the ghosting much less pronounced and therefore much less distracting. Looking at this in-game in CSGO, our character is moving from right to left. At 60 hertz, you can see the animation steps are fairly large, so the ghosting is fairly pronounced. On the right so also the other difference is the more ghosting you have and also the higher your, uh, the, the less your, your frame rate is, basically the rendering will also be slower. So the late, there will be more latency, uh, which basically means that, for example, if you're doing any esports uh, or anything like that, um, what's going to happen is that basically um, you, you won't get to see what's happening uh, faster compared to your competitor. So your competitor, if he's got a better frames per second, we'll be able to see as to what's happening uh, in the gameplay before you. At the moment, it's not like one second before, but it, 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 well, I mean, it very much depends, but it could be a second before, or it could be milliseconds before, but this could really determine uh, whether you'd win at something, uh, you know, in, in the game. So something to take into consideration. Right hand side, you can see the character that's seeing much less information. You can see that the step size is fairly large for frame per second video. Next up is ghosting. Ghosting is bottom. You can so this see is what I was trying to explain. Animation steps are smaller, which makes the animation feel much smoother. So it's much smoother, and you can see things much faster. Taking a look at this top and bottom, you can see that 60 frame and 240 frame rate video have a very different feel in terms of smoothness. The 60 frame rate video has much larger animation steps, making it feel much less smooth than the 240 frame per second video. Next up is ghosting. So guys, this is really what I wanted to talk to you about. And then finally, um, this is the last part of the video, which is a QLED and mini LED, uh, which they're introducing into the Pimax 4K version 3.0 reality series. Next generation QLED and mini LED technology. Q in QLED stands for quantum dots that are contained in a film on top of the display. QLED covers over 90% of the color range of BT2020, which is the newest set of specifications for video broadcasting. OLED covers only 70% of that range. We now include a layer of quantum dots under the hood and an advanced backlight array of mini LEDs across the entire back of the display. All these efforts just to give you the ultimate rich colors and OLED level blacks. Every single one of these mini LEDs are self-luminous, just like OLED to create true black colors with a contrast ratio of a million to one. So basically, they're not using OLED, they're using QLED technology, which will provide you the same amount of crispiness in the actual colors of the pixels and also the sharpness of the pixels because they're more, they're crispier um, with OLED technology, whilst at the same time, use the efficiency of LED technology to power the headset, which will basically give it a longer lasting uh, battery life, I would imagine. The mini LEDs also have a much faster response time, much higher energy efficiency, and most of all, this array reaches a combined 12K horizontal resolution. Crazy. We are the world's first Mad. company to adopt and actually implement mini LEDs on a VR headset. Absolutely amazing. It was amazing. an enormous challenge, but we did it. But they did it. So 5,000 5, mini how many LEDs. LEDs that we managed to squeeze into a 5.5 wow. inch display. Amazing. The density is absolutely impressive. And finally, with our in-house HDR algorithm, everything on the screen, every beautiful virtual world that you come across just becomes that much more true to life. Absolutely crazy. So guys, uh, this is really what I wanted to talk to you about. Um, it, because the video is running a little bit long, uh, I will do shout outs uh, of previous comments and stuff uh, in, in, in the next video that I'll be doing. But I really want to thank you. I want to give a shout out to all of you, really. If you go to the previous video, which was all about the Oculus Quest 2 leaks, by the way, you'll see tons of people have left comments. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, we also uploaded videos about the Varjo Aero and HP Reverb G2. So many people have left comments. It's just mad. I love the love that you're giving. 
Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching today's video. Guys, please remember to reshare on all your social media. Let's grow the community. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers, guys. We're almost there. Whew. Love you guys. Thank you again. I'll see you in the next video and also in the comments below. Take it easy. Bye for now. Ciao.